Is it really illegal to pick a blue bonnet in Texas? Well, yes. here, uh, uh, what, yeah, you vote yes. I say it should should be it or should is. Be. <laughs> it's, All right, it's not, but we might come find you. Yeah, that's right. That's what I say. <laughs> so I searched the books, and as of today, there is currently no law prohibiting the picking of blue bonnets. But that doesn't mean you should do it. Respect the flower. Don't pick blue bonnets. Hey, you know what else? Respect private property. That's right. J- that's what people get in trouble with. It's Th- not the true. fact that they're picking flowers. What? Whose property are you on? Just because you saw some flowers on the side of the road? Yep, you that's hop right. a fence? So let's not forget about oh. criminal trespass. Yeah. Vandalism and destruction of property. B&E. Yeah. Well, okay, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. maybe not. I mean, you got to jump a fence, <laughs> cut some barbed wire, right? And then, you know, I heard Texas A&M has genetically engineered those blue uh. rattlesnakes that are out there in the blue bonnets. <laughs> so those are all reasons to not pick blue bonnets. Yeah. Well, well, howdy, folks. You are listening to the Day Tripper podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. It is March in 2024, and we're back to normal because my co-host, Daniel Meese, is once again on the Buffalo couch. Hey, hey, hey. My wife um, decided maybe she's a one and done -er. (laughs) I don't know. No, she actually said, she goes, I I love doing it. If Daniel can't do, just let me know. I'll jump in. So well, you were missed though, Daniel. But I was expecting tons of comments. I'm sure they were there of like, "Hey, she's a lot prettier than Daniel." <laughs> <laughs> well, that was said. Mostly I'm about sure me. It was. No offense. I, I don't yeah. take any offense to that. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So we're we're back to normal, and we're going to talk some Texas here this month. A lot of fun stuff's been going on in the day tripper world, but also in Texas. Um, just a reminder, y'all, do us a favor: like, subscribe. All the things that it takes to help grow our podcast. Y'all been doing great. On YouTube, if if you're listening to this on a podcast app, we also have a video version of this on our YouTube channel. It's at The Day Tripper. So y'all tune in. And uh, let's go ahead and shout out to our sponsor um, right off the top. New sponsor for the podcast, Rodeo Austin. Yes. Rodeo Austin. We believe it takes grit to grow the next generation. I like that tagline. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. So this is a month-long real Western experience. It raises millions of dollars for Texas kids. It started all the way back in 1938, and it has been growing strong ever since, growing and going. Did you grow up going to the rodeo? You're in Austin. I got one better for you. I grew up in the rodeo. Wait, hold on. What? Okay, maybe not the rodeo, but I showed I showed animals. And <laughs> okay, so yeah. We were always at the uh, you did the, the livestock, livestock show, show part part of the rodeos, but I always went to the rodeos too. What did you show? Uh, I showed swine. Okay, pigs. Yep. Uh, I showed rabbits. Okay, and then did I you had do FFA. Uh, Is that four H? Oh, four H. Okay. Seal. All right. Seal, yeah. Yeah. Texas. Yeah. Seal. Yeah. Sealy. The and, Seal store. No, there is Sealy, but then there's that's by Houston, Seal. sort of. Okay, uh, seal. Yeah, seal. C E L E. C E L E. Okay. Now, do you get to eat the animals after you show them? I did. I did not. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> they do end up going to auction. Yeah. And uh, you know, you get money for college scholarship, basically. Yeah. And uh, that's amazing. I'm sure. I'm sure the people that bought them ate them. I hope so. I mean, I hope maybe so. not the rabbits, but definitely. Hey, yeah. rabbits not bad if you cook yeah, it right. Rabbit. Uh, yeah. Um, well, this is the road. Uh, my family and I, we've gone for the past few years. I went to the rodeo the first time when I was in college at UT. Okay. And went up there, and rodeo was new to me because in Southeast Texas, rodeo is not a thing. I mean, like, right. it, you wrestle alligators and, like, <laughs> that sort of a thing. Crawfish boils, football. But, like, rodeo, I didn't know anybody who did that yeah, stuff. And rodeo. we didn't have. It was very agricultural once you got back in the swamps, crawfish, some cotton, uh, rice, but there wasn't enough ag and livestock for FFA or 4-H. Sure. So we we didn't do that. So came to Austin, went to the rodeo. I loved it. And we've been going back multiple years now. And the kids oh, love it, great. too. It's great. So it's a family-friendly event. Um, you know, it's awesome to get kids sort of exposed to the this sort of life. I mean, all the food we eat comes from these kind of animals and just the ranching heritage of Texas. Absolutely. Rodeo. Rodeo ranching is kind of different, but kind of related. Um, the Rodeo Austin, of course, has the Pro Rodeo, 
Mm-hmm. Um, it has a carnival. It's got a livestock show. There's pig races, pony rides, mutton busting. There's one of those Wild West shootout shows. Pew, pew. <laughs> those are awesome. <laughs> the, the guy falls off the building, you know, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like Six Flags they got used it to all. have. They got it all. Um, and then, of course, let us not forget about the concerts. There's some big ones. First show is going to be Willie Clark Green. Okay. Um, who else is on here? We got Gary Allen, Sawyer Brown, Lucas Nelson, Jamie Johnson, Tracy Bird, Woo! speaking of Southeast Texas, Winona Judd, Jake Owen, Flatland Cavalry, and then it concludes March 23rd with Aaron Watson. So it opens on March 8th, goes all the way to March 23rd. So there's no excuse not to make it out to the rodeo. Tickets are available online. Uh, y'all go check it out. All right. Nice. I'm going. Are you going to go? Oh, I definitely go. You know, Winona was the first concert I ever went to. <laughs> <laughs> that's very Texan of you. It was very Texan. Well, that's not, that's, she's not Texan, but that's very country of you, no I should say. No one else on earth would ever, would ever heard. Was that the Judd's era or uh, just straight Winona? That was Winona. Okay. Got to see Winona for the first time last year at the Two Step In. Ooh. She was there. All right. Yep. And uh, she was great. Yeah. She still got it. Now, who would you go see on this list? Flatland Calvary's top Flatland of mind. Flatland Calvary's up there for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, Gary Allen. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Uh, William I mean, Beckman. Uh, you said uh, Lucas Nelson. Lucas Nelson. I mean, that should have been his son. I love New- Lucas. We saw He's him great. at ACL taping, not, I mean, a couple years ago, but it was great. He's got some big boots to uh, fill. He's got the voice um, to do it. He's He's got the voice. He's got the style. Uh, but. I mean, if you think about it, Willie is a cultural icon, and it's not just Texas, but we're proud of him here in Texas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you got to face it. He's not going to be around forever. Oh, I know. You know, and it's so sad. Like, no one wants to talk about we this. More in the day. Yeah, I know. No one wants to talk about it, but it's going to happen at some point. I, people are going to look to his son. Well, that's yeah, I think. that's true. What is Texas going to do when Willie Nelson finally dies? Is the, <sighs> is the funeral going to be like as big as the Pope's? I mean, are we gonna? It's gonna. It's gonna be big. Yeah, it's gonna be at four. Can we have a PM. public viewing in the capital? It's gonna be at four twenty p.m. <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah, it totally will be. <laughs> oh man, the, all of Austin is gonna be covered in a cloud. It probably will. And then, man, should it, it should be a public viewing? We should have a public. I mean, he's gonna go to the Texas State Cemetery, right? He definitely could. He could. Oh man. It's a sad thing to think about. See, nobody wants to talk about nobody it. Let's move on quick. It. But Lucas is Lucas is <laughs> carrying the mantle pretty well good. right now. All right, Daniel, we've had a busy we had a busy February. Whew. I was looking back at everything we did. We filmed two episodes. We, we had Big Spring uh-huh. and then Helotus. Big Spring seems like forever Helotus. ago. Um, it does. Yeah, man, Big Spring. I'll just recap it for the folks. We interviewed our first billionaire on the day tripper. <laughs> Billionaire with a B. With a B. Because Mark Cuban doesn't return our phone calls. <laughs> and neither does Michael Dell. Uh, but uh, his name is Brent Ryan. He is lives in the DFW area, but he's the reason the hotel settles in Big Spring is as immaculate as it is. So this is a historic hotel that had fallen into disarray. It was abandoned for 30 years. And Brent Ryan grew up out there and thought, man, it is a, a just a a black eye on our city to have this beautiful building abandoned. And so he invested millions of dollars to bring it back up. And it is immaculate. It looks amazing. Yeah, it really does. It was cool that we got to stay there. We did. Uh, not just film it. Super bougie. Yeah. Very bougie. This is not what we're accustomed <laughs> no, to no, no. as the crew of the day tripper. Right. Uh, but it was fun. Awesome. awesome. It, and you're, you're dead on. Like if it didn't, get fixed up the way it has it would have been a black eye on the yeah. city because it's way too big and way too awesome yeah to it's just 10 have it. stories taller yeah. than anything else absolutely and it's, if it just was the way it was where it just fell to disrepair yeah. disappear yeah you just look at it and you're like oh that's sad <laughs> <laughs> i know i mean uh vandals used to break in he told a story sneak up to the top and you know <laughs> knock the cornerstones off or well, you know the top sort of terrace stones exactly. off down they would like plummet and then crash through the ballroom's <laughs> roof and then be in the it's ballroom. Horrible. And so part of his job was taking those stones out of the ballroom, fixing the roof, and then bringing them back and installing them again on the top. Just I crazy. Mean, he did an immaculate job. But he was super friendly. He was really cool to talk yeah, to. Yeah, a really friendly guy and cool that he's using his money to do stuff like that. But Big Spring, State Park, 
We had that we we opened the can of worms with the great taco versus burrito debate again, again, which that one <laughs> officially that, on that's the show one that we, we did, always though. walk into. Yeah, and then in the Helotus episode, I ticked off a bucket list thing for me, which is seeing a show at John T. Floors. I'd never seen one. Yeah, my first time there. Cool, it was great. It's like so John T. Floors. For those that don't know, it is a dance hall, an old school dance hall, and it's on. If there was a Mount Rushmore. Of Texas dance halls, this would be on it. Yeah. And it'd With, be at the top, too. It'd yeah. be up there at the very top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got Green Hall, mm-hmm. John T. Floors, Billy Bob's in Fort Worth. Yep. And I don't know what the other one is. I was going to say, there, there's lots of little places that are probably more popular than we realize out, out in the country. Yeah. But those are at the top that it's just kind of like everybody would know about those. Sure. So, like, this is a good question. What would be on the Mount Rushmore of Texas dance halls? Texas dance, dance halls. Yeah. Uh, the, the viewers. The, viewers. And the, the fourth one, I think, I think the first three are pretty good, well settled. The fourth one is the one that's up in the air. I don't know. I mean, everybody's got an SBJST. Right? SBJST, yeah, but you know, the ones that like George Strait played and Willie Nelson played. You know what was a huge guys. one? And now I don't I don't know what happened to it, but do you remember Des Hall Dance Hall? Des I don't. That was uh-uh. in Pflugerville. Okay. Uh, Elvis played there. What? I mean, this was, and I actually have an aunt that was there when Elvis played. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Great aunt. And yeah, no, it's it's still there, but I think they turned it into a Tejano uh, dance Desaw club. Desaw dance. Like, yeah. It's on Desaw, that's a road, It's on right? Desaw Road. Yeah. yeah, but that's another another one that would have been really popular. Oh, man, that's cool. That, we, we're going to open that up to the viewers. What's, yeah, the we need fourth, some help. what's the fourth spot on the Texas Dance Hall Mount Rushmore? Like yeah. you haven't really made it until you played at at boom. boom. What is that? All right, and then I went to Plano uh, at the very end of February. Had a great time, and Plano was one that uh, you know people write that town off as just another Dallas suburb. Yeah, but when you start getting a little gritty in there, there's some good stuff, man. I like Plano. We uh, like we went to a uh, like an old butcher shop that makes their own burgers out of bison. They grind all the stuff. It's like in the middle of Plano, and they're like, you know, they also process deer sausage. So <laughs> it's like still country. Like people are unloading dead deer in the back. You're nice. eating burgers in the front. It's just, <laughs> that's the way to do it. Anything else, man? February for you? <sighs> Big stuff. Just busy. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm glad I'm back. I, we missed the last, I missed the last podcast. Uh, just crazy work on the episodes. Hey, man, we had to finish strong. Uh, I'm really thankful that Laura was able to cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, the episodes are good, too. People have liked them. So I hope y'all yes. saw them. We had Giddings with the great Miss Tootsie. Mm-hmm. We had Canadian. Canadian, you know, shooting guns out of a helicopter, which yep. is very Magnum PI. <laughs> and then we had Centerville. Yep. Which was good. Leona General Store. Steaks. Uh, we berry picking. It's good. I mean, they all came out. They're very um, kind of folksy, but but good. Yeah. It, you know, you do your big fun. city episodes, and then you got your like small town episodes. Which one do you prefer? I always like the smaller country towns. towns. Yeah. I it's more my pace. Okay. I feel comfortable with that. That's kind of what I grew up in. Sure. And so, I, it's more fun to be there and film it, and then I think it's more fun for me in the edit side because yeah I, i'm thinking differently the pace is a little slower the pace is a little different we do pay i mean we edit them different we do yeah I, you know the music's different and to a lot of degree the music sets the pace of the show sure. you know well country road bobbing along mm-hmm. it was good stuff um all right so let us jump ahead to meanwhile in texas while you've been listening to this podcast, lots of stuff's been going on in the Lone Star State. This is Meanwhile in Texas. All right, Dan, the man, uh, what'd you find? Okay, well, I found something pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this guy, Roderick Johnson of Wascom, Texas. You know where Wascom is? Wascom? That was a new one for me. Shoot, I'd I got to look Google that one that. up. Uh, while what? you look that up, I'll tell you. So this didn't happen in Texas, but this is he's from Texas and he I think he lives here now. Uh, so he was up in Omaha, Nebraska back in 2021. 20, um, something happened at a Walmart where basically <laughs> they thought that he was shoplifting. Oh, no, uh, he he wasn't. He okay. wasn't shoplifting, but they made a huge deal about it. 
uh, to the point where he decided to sue Walmart. Oh, the and David it, Goliath, buddy. Well, Good I luck know, with that. You know, uh, it was a false pretense of shoplifting. Uh, and he claimed he suffered civil rights violations based on his race and color. Okay. That was a huge part of it. Um, so basically, he decided to sue Walmart for $100 million. <laughs> $100 million. $100 million. Because uh, that reputation is going to be worth a lot in Wascom, Texas, I'm sure. I, you know, but hey, just so you know, he said he would settle with unlimited shopping for the rest of his life. <laughs> So if he could just walk into Walmart and take anything, take he, anything wants, he wants for the rest of his life, then he, he'll he'll settle. Oh, that. that's generous of him. So. <laughs> generous of him. What is Walmart thinking? Are they thinking this guy's going to take over a hundred million dollars worth of groceries and you home know, goods? I you see these stories every once in a while of just random things that will happen, and then like some crazy number next to it. They're going to yeah, sue. yeah, you insane. Know, it's. F- it's just like, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, sure. not knowing the facts, it's quite possible based on race. Maybe there were some civil rights things. Maybe he was treated differently based on his race. Oh, I have no problem but, with what he's like, saying. A hundred million that's, dollars? That's the big thing for me. Oh, my gosh. Um, but the lifetime, lifetime supply. And so that made me think, Chet, if you could have unlimited shopping at Walmart <laughs> for the rest of your life... <laughs> Um, how would you, how would you take advantage Dude, of that? Dude, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> if you walked into a Walmart, could you spend a hundred thousand dollars? I don't think I could. I don't think, I mean, like you buy a bunch of like junk g- g- cookies, like you rob their whole freezer section. You're going to get, I don't know, a few thousand dollars, 10,000 yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. That's crazy. Uh, I mean, d- CDs. I get all the CDs I want. Do they even have those anymore? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I mean, you could you could do a lot of damage the first time, but then after that, like, you got a nice TV. Yeah, what exactly. Do do? Well, unless you're giving them away. To yeah, I mean, if you something. got you know, a little shady side deal, you're selling um, them in the parking lot. You go get the tires from the automotive store shop. You know, whatever. I wouldn't get your that. man. You get some nice fishing poles. You get a lot of nice fishing poles and oh, bait. Man. So Wascom, I looked it up. It is all the way on the Louisiana border. Okay. Um, so he's over there with Marshall. Your, he's so with your people. It's deep east Texas, northeast Texas. Yeah, yeah. The, he's he's more than a little northern, north, more northern, northern. All, very close to Caddo Lake. So okay. Um, He's the northern swamp contingency of Texas. I'm from the southern swamp contingency. Okay. So. It, you would have only asked for $50 million. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, down in the south. Ain't nobody got a $100 million $100 million. reputation on, in southeast Texas. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> uh, oh, man, that's funny. Well, so, Roderick, good luck with your endeavors. Yeah, good luck. Um, if you need another out. attorney, call me. My license is still good. We'll go. I only tra- I charge a very reasonable fee. I get to go with you every other trip to Walmart. <laughs> yeah, and you, you buy go. me. You buy me stuff. <laughs> Uh, wow. All right, so What'd this is find? another, you know, we do a lot of animal stories on the show. And there's a lot out there. Yeah, and this is another Texas animal story, all right? So this is, there's a guy named Austin. He lived in Bernie. Um, Austin has a, a, a tremendous backstory of overcoming uh, a brain tumor and surgeries, and he's been very near the brink of death many times, wow. but none worse than when his best friend decided to kill him. All right. Who Wait, was what? his best friend? Well, it was his warthog named Waylon. <laughs> so his best friend, supposedly, was this warthog. Wait, All right. he did get killed? No, but he probably should have died. But he, okay, I had to look this, t- I mean, this this is a, is a, a harrowing story of, of him. Uh, and his pet Waylon was like Pumbaa, right? What's yeah. a warthog Pumbaa from The Lion King? This was Pumbaa with a death wish oh, to wow. kill his best friend. So Waylon and him had grown up together. Waylon was little but got big. Waylon was warthogs get to 250 pounds. Oh, they get big. Yeah, and they've got seven inch razor sharp tusks mm-hmm. that come out of each side of their mouth. But Waylon was always friendly. Um, they would walk around together. Uh, Waylon would fall asleep on his chest after feedings. <laughs> he loved red red apples. This I'm reading this from the Texas Monthly article. He loved red apples, rough belly scratches, and tender massages on his bony snout. And then Austin, quote, Early on, I'd take him with me through the Whataburger drive-thru, and he'd sit in the front seat as happy as he can be. This dude had a pet warthog. This was not at the 250-pound mark. I hope clearly. Not. I mean, maybe. He's talking I, about when it was like a dog, like I, a, a little I mean, tiny pig. 
I don't know. I don't know. This thing, like maybe when it was little, but even when it was big, it would be at his heel, like hit his, you know, at his side all it's the time. A wild animal. I know, walking around the ranch. But yeah, people have pet pigs. I never hear of pet, but yeah. a warthog is a little different. A warthog than a is, pet pig, is right? different. Is different. So one day he is walking in the enclosure. He scratches uh, Waylon on the mouth, gives him a little belly rub, goes and does about his business. And then he's walking back to his truck and boom, Waylon takes him out from behind. Not only that, gets Austin on the ground and starts flailing his uh, snout around. Stabs him in the right thigh, stabs him in the left thigh. He gets up, stabs him in the calf. He tries to put him in a headlock. Waylon stabs him in the windpipe. Stabs him. He tries to grab him, slices his wrist. Austin is just destroyed, demolished, and his blood is all over the place. It's filling up his boots, and he realizes he, he, he pulls himself away to get out of the enclosure. He's out in the country, so he's a, half, a quarter mile from his house, no other ranchers he knows, and he realizes, I'm going to bleed out unless I get help. i got to call for help. Where's his phone? It fell out of his pocket in the enclosure. Oh he's got to go back and get it. He's losing consciousness. He goes back in. Luckily, Waylon doesn't attack him again. Gets his phone, is able to call his parents who rush in, scoop him up, get him to the hospital as fast as possible. And he had lost over half of his blood wow. fighting this warthog. Wow. I don't know. I, I didn't see in the article what was the ultimate fate of Waylon. I imagine Waylon is no bacon. longer a member of the family. <laughs> bacon. bacon. Yeah. That's some uh, warthog, <laughs> warthog stew. What warthog the chili. Heck? But, you know, that just goes to show you, like, don't have wild animals as pets. No. Even, but this one is so uh, shocking because him and Waylon had just grown up together. Like, they had, they had known each other for years and not, no sign of aggression. And then in an instant, click, I'm a, I'm a wild animal and I'm going to eat you. I, I just don't think that your relationship with a wild animal from birth can be stronger than what it's, um, yeah, it's biology. Instincts. It's biology. Yeah, like it. it it's knows programming what to is. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, whatever. Millions of years or however long it takes for a warthog to get programmed in the wild. Yeah, that is gonna dictate how that thing operates. Absolutely. It's like the people who have pet wolves. Pet wolves. Uh, we went pet to that lions. Pet li- uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. People have crazy things. Warthog and, is that's dangerous. Yeah, 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 and nasty too. I mean, he would like, there's pictures on this Texas Monthly article of him with his warthog, like sleeping on him. I'm like, (laughs) what thing is gross, man? It's disgusting. No, I'd pass. Hard pass on that. uh, Yeah, don't, don't, listen, kids, don't get a pet warthog. I, you know, I even, I just told you, I used to show pigs when I was younger. They were gross, man. Do you have one turn on you, Daniel? Um, Your bunnies try to eat you like the Monty Python bunny? They were (laughs) cute. No. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. The rabbits were nothing. Yeah. But the pigs, it, here's grip. something. Did you know that if a pig can get its front legs over something, it can put its whole body over it? Okay. Because okay. we, we had fences that were, you know, they're they're kind of like a, a a dog run would be. Yeah, right? like a pin. But they're not a... not as high, these pins. So probably about three and a half feet tall or so. Yeah. They would jump out. What? And you would think there's no way. But if Athletes. they can get their front legs up there, they just roll over the top and no, fall okay. down on the other side. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. And get up and cruise. I mean, I've seen feral hogs on a straight sprint they're fast oh yeah warthogs can run 30 miles an hour that's so crazy that's fast uh, much more dangerous than a, a domesticated pig <laughs> uh yeah yeah you think for sure uh all right um so texas you never fail to amaze us never with, with the stories that mo- that article is on texasmonthly.com if y'all want to go and read it it's wild this man <laughs> fighting off his best friend who's trying to kill him all right So let's jump over. Texas Music Minute. We bring you guys a song, uh, something that, you know, we think you need to know about. An artist, new music, old music. I was tempted to do the Beyonce song that is taking over the world, Texas Hold'em. Oh, she went country. She did go country, but, I mean, everybody's already heard that song, so you've heard it. 
I have not actually listened to the whole thing. Oh, it's I, everywhere I now, Dan. Parts of it. I just, I don't know. This ain't Texas. Do, 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 do. This ain't Oldham. Oh, but the line is, this ain't Texas. I'm like, eh, I got nothing to do with it. It is Texas. It sounds very stereotypical from what I heard. Uh, A little bit. A, a little bit. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's Beyonce doing a country thing. Yeah. It reminds me of that um, Blanco Brown song that came out the okay. other day. Uh, Like it came out about a year or so ago. I know exactly what you're talking about. Had the whole dance with it. You know what? All you can say though is like you can't say what is and isn't country. I know everything's country. It I mean Queen always changes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It always changes. I mean, I'm I'm gonna support Queen B if she wants to go country. That's fine. Um, but I didn't think that would be a revelation to you guys. No, I want to hear something. I'm gonna bring you something different. This is not country music. All right. Oh, okay. So. Taylor Swift is having her moment. We're playing T Swift. No, we're not playing T Swift. Okay, okay. But we're playing a, a, a girl, a female singer. That if I just played the song for you and didn't tell you who it was, you might very well guess this was Taylor Swift. She's the Texas version, maybe. All okay, right. Okay. Her name is Jess Williamson. I just learned about her. Uh, this is the way some music writers have described her voice. Her voice is surrounded by a deep-hued kaleidoscope of dusty 70s cinema, 90s country music, and breezy West Coast psychedelia. <laughs> what does that mean? Whoa. I don't know. All right. But she is, okay. I know, uh, like music writers, uh, they just go into, um, you know, chat GPT, write something uh, pretentious, yeah. mentioning other things. Um, born in Louisville. Up in the DFW area, she attended UT Austin as a photojournalism major and didn't actually start writing or playing until she was like a senior at UT. And that's when she was like, I'm going, I'm going for this. So she jumped in and she's been doing it a long time. Uh, But this year has been her breakout year. I'm going to play you the song Hunter that came from her album last year, the 2023 album called Time Ain't Accidental. Just to give you... Sort of uh, the, the connection to Taylor Swift. All right. Taylor Swift works with one producer exclusively. Uh, his name is Jack Antonoff. We know this. A guy named Jack. He produces all of Taylor Swift's yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. He is, he's heralded as like basically the genius behind Taylor Swift. Okay. I mean, Taylor Swift is talented, no doubt, but he's the one that like right. does it. He won producer of the year at the Grammys. Yes. He's, he's the, yeah, he was the, there. Arch- the genius architect that makes it sound like it does. He shared his Spotify wrapped, you know, these are the top songs. His number one song was this song. So what is oh. Taylor Swift's producer listening to? Jess Williamson. Here's his okay. quote. He says, Hunter, the song I'm going to play, is a perfect song and a recording. I adore it so much. That's a high that, praise. Ain't that? Ain't That's that? That's a high so, praise. So not to overhype it. But I thought, hey, if this girl is the next big thing, let's uh, get in early, even though she's already started to kind of kind of swirl. All right, here we go. So I give you Hunter by Jess Williamson. I've been thrown to the wolves and they ate me raw. Or both sides at the Shangri-La. Thrown back a few more and I mopped up the floors It's a life of delusion and love is the cure Remember when it was for fun and for free All of my visions, they danced around me When you're young, you'll live through hell for the dream But hell is a real place There we go. We that's, see the Taylor Swift. It's not Swift. bad. It's not it's not, bad. I, I mean, it's not bad. Um, not necessarily my 
preferred style of music, but I can recognize good music. And that that's that could be a Taylor music. Swift song. It honestly, once it got to the chorus, chorus, you're like, oh, absolutely. She's like got Taylor a little Swift. more country in the beginning, which yes. I appreciate. Like she sounds a little bit more Brandy Carlisle. Like she got like a little bit of a raspier voice. Yep. It's not as soft as Taylor, but you could totally tell. Sailor Taylor could record that song tomorrow, uh-huh. and it would be on her any of her albums. Yeah, no, like, I could definitely it, hear that. any of it, and you could see why Jack Antonoff likes it so much. For like sure, Midnight's all that stuff. That's like well, the songs he's recording. I'm more excited to learn more about her though, rather yeah. than just the song. So yeah, Jess to, uh, Williamson, Jess Williamson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when cool. the Taylor era is done, it might be the Jess era next. Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. All right. <laughs> let's jump in. Uh, questions from the backseat. Are we there yet? Hey, can you pass me the snacks? Uh, when are we going to stop? I got to go. All right. Questions from the backseat. You guys have sent in some excellent questions. And uh, keep doing it. Podcast at thedaytripper.com or just contact at thedaytripper.com. All right. Here's the question. How did the blue bonnet become the state flower of Texas? I mean, you don't really see them anywhere else. Right? I mean, you know, I don't know. Do well, other states I mean, have blue bonnets? I'm sure they do, but it's, it's, it's got to be mainly here. It's a Texas thing. Yeah. All right. So I had to look this up. Um, and it turns out in 1901, the Texas legislature decided that we needed a state flower. But what was it going to be? There were three main contenders for our state flower. The first, the cotton bowl. <laughs> Just the, the Wait, that's the puff of cotton. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I guess technically that's a flower. Okay. The cotton bowl, which that would have made sense. But All that, right. No, that's not a flower. It is. Scientifically. Okay. It flowers. Same way a tomato's okay. a fruit. Yes. All right, whatever. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, India the, paintbrush? Nope. Eh, no. The, the prickly pear cactus. A, okay. The, well, that has a flower has on a beautiful it. flower it on is, it. Yes. And uh, this is just a funny note. John Nance Garner. My ancestor, the vice president of the United States, he supported that one above all. Uh, that he makes said, sense. He said it needs to be the prickly pear, and that's why he got the nickname Cactus Jack for the rest of his life. You've he was be Cactus Jack because he was he was anti blue bonnet, pro prickly pear. <laughs> and anyway, the third in the running, the blue bonnet, of course. Yeah. Well, it was hotly debated, but eventually the chapter of colonial dames in Texas won the day. And in 1901, the blue bonnet became our official state flower. Um, it was technically a specific variety of blue bonnet. And there are six different species now of blue bonnet named as our state flower. So at one point, it was like this blue bonnet. And they're like, well, what about this one? They're like, oh, yeah, that one, too. It's <laughs> what just about all this of one? Them. All of them. So uh, that is it. 1901, blue bonnets became hey. as iconic as the Alamo. The Alamo? Yeah. Willie Nelson. All of them? Yeah. Oh, all right. I mean, Texas, barbecue, Alamo, Texas. David Crockett. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. Cool. Hey, and, you know, I, I picked these questions because it is March. It's wildflower season. We're about to see what should be an excellent blue bonnet season. Oh, yeah. All right. So here is another one. Sarah Bevel Lee and Alejandro Lopez asked this one. Is it really illegal to pick a blue bonnet in Texas? Well, yes. here's a, uh, what, yeah, you vote yes. I say it should should be it or should is. Be. <laughs> it's, All right, it's not, but we might come find you. Yeah, that's right. That's what I say. <laughs> so I searched the books, and as of today, there is currently no law prohibiting the picking of blue bonnets. But that doesn't mean you should do it. Respect the flower. Don't pick blue bonnets. Hey, you know what else? Respect private property. That's right. J- that's what people get in trouble with. It's Th- not the true. fact that they're picking flowers. What? Whose property are you on? Just because you saw some flowers on the side of the road? Yep, you that's hop right. A fence? So let's not forget about oh. criminal trespass. Yeah. Vandalism and destruction of property. B and E. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. maybe not. I mean, if you got to jump a fence, <laughs> cut some barbed wire, right? And then, you know, I heard Texas A&M has genetically engineered those blue Uh. rattlesnakes that are out there in the blue bonnets. So (laughs) those are all reasons to not pick blue bonnets. Yeah. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. (laughs) We did that at the same time. (laughs) We both did. (laughs) Uh, Uh. Oh, that's funny. All right. And here we go. Our final uh, third question, also about flowers, from Ruben Lucero. Um, Tell us more about the gold poppies that grow in El Paso's Franklin Mountains in the spring. 
We don't have blue bonnets out here, but we have poppies. Where did they come from? I had to look this up. So the Franklin Mountains are a very rough mountain range in El Paso. Yes. It's the bottom of the Rocky Mountains. Mm-hmm. They're right at the northern edge of the city. They're big. They're tall. They're awesome. Uh, and in the spring, they get covered in golden poppies. I didn't even they're know They're beautiful. Yellow. I, I'm, I haven't been to El Paso before. Oh, dude. We got to go to El Paso. We got we to gotta make I, another episode. We, we did. We it's did a one. long time ago. I've only seen pictures of these poppies. Okay. They're gorgeous. And they're in the middle of the desert just covering everything. So where did they come from? Everybody has been debating this. There is a lore out there. There's lots of different theories. We'll put to bed what the actual one is. Army troops planted them, you know, coming back from maybe overseas and thought, look, we can have poppies here. That's kind of the story in Georgetown with our red poppies. Um, A widow spread them as a memorial to her past husband. That would be romantic, yeah. They got brought over in sheep's wool, shipped in by train, and they dropped on the ground. Okay. Okay. Uh, a couple dropped them from a plane on their honeymoon. A crop duster dropped them. There's something about a Japanese gardener. But here's the truth. There were some natural poppies out there, and an El Paso man named W.G. Rowe in 1931 came up with this idea that if we would propagate and plant these poppies, we could be onto something. We need more tourism in El Paso. We need more beauty. Let's get those mountains covered in poppies. So he runs a newspaper story in the newspaper, starts a poppy fund, so people start contributing poppies, and uh, two weeks later, it had gone over $100 in the poppy fund, which was enough to plant 56 acres of mountainside Whoa. poppies. Okay. $100 went a lot further back then than it does today. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, 56 acres, and so supposedly some Boy Scouts and some other volunteers covered the mountains in poppy seeds, and they've propagated to this day. Wow. Google Franklin Mountain Poppies. It's gorgeous. Check that out. It's gorgeous. All right. So those are our questions. Hey, y'all go out and enjoy the wildflowers uh, this March and April. They are going to be beautiful. And uh, remember, send in your questions. We love we love answering them. Here we go. Fan rants and musings. Hey, Day Tripper. I got a bone to pick with you. Oh, my goodness. It's the Day Tripper. We love your show. This, this... <laughs> We've got some good ones. We got we got some good ones. All right. Here we go. This one comes from Joseph Steele. He says, your show is about Texas. And who cares? <laughs> it's Texas for G's sake. That guy Abbott is governor. Enough said. You seem like a nice guy, but day trip somewhere more interesting. Like Wisconsin. <laughs> or... Or Delaware or Idaho. What? I don't know why in the world he picked those three states. But he says Texas is boring. Trip somewhere interesting like Delaware. Or what? Idaho. How do I, how, Idaho. Let's talk about some potatoes. Potatoes, baby. Oh, Wisconsin? my goodness. Cheese? Green Bay Packers? What's what? I mean... This is, I don't want to seem like uh, a hypocrite, but like people say, like, what's in small town Texas? We show you there's plenty. So, but what's in Wisconsin? I don't know. What's there? I, you know, that's for someone else to ice tell fishing people. Ice I fishing. I don't care. I, don't. <laughs> I mean, I'm a statist. I'm a state. Yeah. I, I like Texas. Texas. I think we're the best. That's a, hey, well, you know, a, here, here, <laughs> hardy har. Oh, man. No, I mean, in That's all honesty, Texas quote, has something that a lot of states don't have. There's That's a true. few states like people. People want to know about Alaska, Hawaii, California. California yeah, there, you know, but there's like but there like are Texas. states like geographically diverse, culturally diverse. Um, there are a few states with sort of a mythos about them. In yeah. like, uh, heck, half the Discovery Channel now is Alaska shows. So clearly, people want to know sure. about Alaska. Uh, but Texas is unique, and it, I would say that makes unique. it better. We've got. The coast, the pines, the high desert, the, you know, the wild west, southwest. It's just different. It's it is different. different. We've got uh, all the history of being our own country. The Spanish settled here. Then there's the colonial settlement, the Native American history that goes back thousands upon thousands of years. It's just different. It's different. You know, maybe he should go start a show. I know. Joseph, one of let me know. The Delaware Tripper. It'll last about a half a season. Uh, All right, sorry. Here we go. Mark Galloway, this is it. He says this. He says, please turn your fork over and eat like someone who was taught basic table manners instead of like Euro trash and their wannabe Californians. 
Oh. When I saw you eating that way, I changed channels. Greetings from Amarillo. <laughs> That's how he ends <laughs> Greetings it. Greetings from Amarillo. <laughs> That's how he ends it. Um, I don't... So, he says have you need to have table manners, not like the Europeans. But then the Europeans start table manners? Isn't that where we learned all our table manners? I... I'm so just like... I think what he means, what? and he doesn't even say what episode, but like, I was told, you know, like, if you're going to cut with your right hand and the knife, yeah. the fork, the prongs can kind of swerp, swoop down like a rainbow instead of like up like a you, Neanderthal. Oh, yeah. You don't stab it. Like that. You're supposed to, yeah. Turn it like that, right? Down, and the fork is cut. down. You cut, but then and then yeah, you're, you supposed like to, that. you're supposed to switch over to your right you gotta hand. got to switch over. So... That's what the Europeans would do, right? Yeah, here's another one. Like, who cares? <laughs> you know, I, I know. Oh, man. Oh, uh, no. Nothing better Mark, to do. People. Mark Galloway, we should have him come in for like a, a cotillion class here for us, <laughs> Mark. Um, oh, boy. Hey, all right. We're going to finish on a good one. This comes in from our friends in Deutschland. Ooh. From the Fatherland of Germany. They're writing in to tell us. This is Volker and Rosie from Germany. All right. I love, I love getting this, this email. It says this. We're a German couple, and we were in the USA for the first time in November, and it was our first time in Texas as well. While preparing for our trip, we stumbled across your videos, and we're thrilled by the suggestions. We visited many of the places you featured in the show, and we would like to thank you. During our time in Texas, we chose Austin as our starting point for day trips and immediately fell in love with Texas and all you Texans. So much for that. We are coming back to Texas for three weeks in April to explore even more of our beautiful state. That's so cool. Of this beautiful state. Yeah. Maybe we'll meet on our road trips. Thanks for the suggestions. Volker and Rosie from Germany. P.S. Please excuse me if my English is not entirely correct. Volker, your English was perfect. It's better than most people. That better write than Mark in. Galloway's uh, <laughs> <laughs> table manners. Um, um, that's, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's why we do this. Yeah, we do. You know, so it's it's cool to hear something like yeah. that. Yeah, we hopefully make a television show that inspires people to get out and explore their world. Yeah, and if that's our world, and you come visit Texas, or you just take the that lesson that there's stuff in your own backyard that you should go explore. Whatever that is, we want you to do it. So we make a television show to inspire you to watch less TV. That's the whole goal. Um, all right. So thank you guys. Remember, write in. We don't care. Trash us, bash us. We got thick skin. And you might even end up on the podcast. Uh, shout out to our sponsor, Rodeo Austin. And uh, y'all make sure you get tickets. Starts March 8th, and you can kick in. Hey, we got someone visiting us. Oh, perfect Shepherd, you can timing. come in. Look at Shepherd. this. Shepard, come here. You can come in. Come in, come in. It was bring in. your Shep to work day. Here, come here. Come sit on my lap. I'm going to move. Oh, what is that? Hey, come here. <laughs> <laughs> you this is, this is what happens head. when Dad has to babysit for uh, the weekend. Yeah. Bring your Shep to work day. Um, what are you playing with? What is this? Yeah? Well, where did you find it? Upstairs. What's upstairs? Toys. toys. Daddy's prop closet. I was going to say, toys. <laughs> yes, toys, all of costumes, the props. All of that stuff. All of that stuff. All right, guys. Thank you all. Thank you, Alex, for being our producer. Mixmaster Fantastic. That's your new name. Mixmaster Fantastic? Ooh. That's pretty good. We got to get you a mic, brother. Uh, all right, Daniel. Say your goodbyes. All right. See you all next time. And Shepard, say bye. Bye. Say it with me. Bye. Oh, Dios, amigos. <laughs>